Hi, welcome back to the channel. So a few days ago, Google Play Books announced a new feature that they're releasing to authors called Auto Narrate Audiobooks. And what it does is for anyone who publishes through Google Play Books, they can convert their eBooks into an AI generated audiobook for free for a limited time. It's part of their beta program. And I did a video on it uh, on the 28th uh, about the news. So you can go back to my channel and check it out for more information. Well, in the process of going through the news, I decided to just look into the process of converting your ebook into an audiobook, and I got about halfway through, and um, I had some feedback that uh, I guess uh, some of you out there are actually interested in finding out more. So I figured today I would do a video on how to not only convert your ebook to audiobook, but also uh, see what some of the best practices might be, and then some alternatives that we can look into um, if maybe Google's translation is not really what you want. So I thought today would be a good day to do that. Um, I'm not sure how long this video will be, uh, but we're going to nevertheless have fun with it. So get your drink, get your coffee, uh, whatever you like to have by you whenever you watch videos like this uh, to keep you awake. Uh, so uh, do that, come back, and uh, we'll get started. So before you can create an audiobook through Google, you actually need to make sure that you are part of their partner center first, and you also need to make sure you have at least one ebook. On their platform and the ebook of course needs to be the book that you're going to convert into audio uh, it's one of the primary rules in order to participate in the program so do make sure that if you haven't done anything with google play yet uh, make sure you first submit just any ebook that you want to eventually convert into audio because what's going to happen is you're going to they're going to pull your content from your ebook as the base for your audio so it won't work if you don't already have a copy of the ebook. So if you are, let's say, exclusive with uh, Amazon, um, uh, their Kindle Select program, KDP Select, uh, you won't be able to do this, quite frankly, because uh, you're exclusive. And you know, there are rules with exclusivity means you have to you know, be specifically on their platform to use Google Play's audiobook because you have to have the, the ebook version, which means you break exclusivity and it just doesn't work. So. Uh, you can only use this if you're a worldwide author or you distribute through worldwide means. So bear that in mind. Uh, but assuming that that's for you and you want to do this, um, then you're going to have to select your book. So I've already started um, one on Shellout. And if you've watched my video from the news story the other day, you'll see that I've already got started on it. Um, I will actually try to do a walkthrough on my other book uh, just to give you an overview on how to get started. If you did miss that video, but for now, what I want to do is show you how to get into your audiobook uh, from within the Partner Center. And then we can look at how to actually do a conversion. So right now, what you need to do is go into your content. Because right, this is going to pull in from my um, my ebook sales. And of course, it's a free book, so I'm not going to have any sales, even though I, I will, uh, do get um, downloads from time to time. Um, what you need to do is go into your, your content section. And then over here, you'll see View audio, Narrated Audiobook. If you don't, um, that's assuming you've already made one. If you have not made one yet, then you're going to see it as upload a file, or sorry, create an auto narrated audiobook. Okay. So, however you're starting, whether you're you're coming back or you're beginning for the first time, um, you will click. You'll go through the content section and collect, click the button. Sorry. Um, now again, in my other video, you see that when you click the button, it's going to give you an option to uh, choose your. Um, what type of audio file you want to do. Um, if we do that here, um, you can create an auto narrated book or you can um, select an ebook on Google Play, which meaning like if you don't want this one, you can do another one. Um, or you can do um, a preview. And then it's going to go through and um, you can select which ID you want. It, it, again, the process is pretty straightforward. Um, I already did this on Shellout, so once again, if you want to go view the process, go check out my other video. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, pick up where I left off. So if we go into the auto-narrated audiobook section and into the audiobook uh, overview, you'll see that I've got slightly different issues here. I've got a different, um, I have no content file yet because I have not created it, and then um, I assume the cover is the same. We can look into that. Um, actually, if I click on that, 
Um, I guess I have to do a new cover. So usually with audiobooks, you'll do like a, um, a square format. So I imagine we have to do that here too. Um, oops, didn't want to exit with the whole thing. Um, so again, we'll go back into view auto narrow the book. So uh, if you go into the book info section, you'll see that it did copy over my description for my ebook, but it has a different publication date on still date everything. So you are going to have to fill in all of this um, like you would your regular ebook. Now I imagine you can do this after you've done the conversion because then you'll know how long it is and you'll know all the different uh, features. But do be aware that when you create your audiobook, you are going to have to set this like you do with ebook. Okay. Um, and then we go into the content. This is where you're going to um, actually work with your um, section. I should have a file here. Um, I started one. Oh, looks like okay. You know what? Actually, I can. Um, oh, this wants my EPUB. This doesn't want my audio. Okay, that's worth knowing. Um, so far, what it looks like is it looks like to, to use Google Play's audio book, you need to, um, you'll have to use their system. That's what it looks like to me. Um, but like I said, I've already imported the audio text. I'm not sure why it's asking for my content when I've already um, sent it through. But you know, if you go through these issues, uh, you can expect them, uh, just kind of work with them. Uh, so once you import your audiobook or your ebook rather, it's going to get, uh, it's going to bring in all of your uh, pages as you've written them in the ebook. Bear in mind that it's not going to affect your ebook at all. So any changes you make here, uh, it's going to only be for the audiobook. So you don't need to worry about uh, messing things up. So if you look at the differences between my previous video and right here, you'll see that I did a little bit of work um, off to the side. What I actually did is I moved, I originally had my uh, content separated like this, but I want you to listen to it real quick and I want you to hear the difference. Shell Out, a short story by Jeremy Bercy. And actually, originally I had, I, I didn't have buy in here, I just had it like that. So if you're converting your ebook, um, you need to pay special close attention to your to way things are arranged because you're going to have to make some changes. Uh, in order for this to sound good, I, ha I did have to m merge these together and uh, I put the buy in there because it sounds awkward otherwise. So if I play it again. Shell Out, a short story by Jeremy Bercy. It's a little bit better, right? Now, what I may want to do is I may want to speed it up a little bit because I do notice that the uh, one time is a little on the slow side. So I may want to drop it down and it's maybe 90.90. Let's try that. Shell Out, a short story. By Jeremy Bercy. It's a little better, and I'm not terribly unhappy with it. So for now, I'm going to leave it at 90 instead of uh, 1.0. Um, and as I de demonstrated in the other video, you can select your voices up through here. But bear in mind that uh, whatever voice you choose for your audiobook, it's going to be consistent throughout the whole thing. So you cannot do uh, mix and match with voices, which is a shame because um, I have voices that I like using for my text. And A, I don't see any of them here. But B, uh, what I've noticed is that when you're writing fiction in particular, the dialogue uh, doesn't always sound the best if you um, if you don't have a separate narrator. So for example, if you see in this line here, uh, his father said, and then you uh, then you move into Greg's text, and then you have uh, a new text down here, it's not going to be entirely clear who the speaker is. So again, I'm going to play it so you can hear it. And I want you to just kind of listen to one, some of the issues you might face when doing a con conversion to um, the auto-narrated book. Just get a side job, his father said. Hard work makes the man and the money. I would have done it myself had I any sense when I was your age. Keep a life, you know. Greg's vision blurred. He saw the light coming in through the windows, but everything it touched turned to haze. When will I have time to study? Ask one of the other millions of kids who have to work their way through college. Great friend. Okay. All right. So 
again, if you're paying close attention to the reading as a reader, then you may be fine. Uh, but if there's any chance that maybe the reader doesn't uh, get the thread of who's speaking, you may need to co uh, throw in a couple extra tags in there. Now, I know that we want to try to keep the audiobook as faithful to the uh, textbook as we can, and it's understandable that we'll um, you know, need to you know, keep that, that in mind when we're doing the conversions. Um, but again, this is where playing it back matters, because if you find that you're lost because the voice actor does not differentiate between Greg and his father, for example, um, then you may have to do some adjustments uh, to the way um, the presentation works. So one thing you can do, um, and this is not a very good example, but I'll show you nonetheless. If you need to make some changes, what you can do is you can highlight a particular text and then right click. And it's going to give you some um, options here. You'll see the options are basically edit pronunciation or play the word. If you play the word, you'll hear it. Thanks. And it's playing the first word that it picks up. So even though I've highlighted the entire phrase here, it's only picking up the first one. So there's no need to um, highlight all of it. Just highlight the word you want. Now, if you have a word that it cannot pronounce, pronounce uh, correctly, you just go into edit pronunciation. And then it's going to give you all these different options you can choose. So you can test them. You can There's this one. Greg's. There's this. Greg is. Greg South. Greg is. Greg South. So clearly none of those are ideal. So you can give your own suggestion down here. And so I think you just, whenever you see a microphone, that means you're going to speak into it. Um, so I probably don't want to give my own suggestion because I don't want to actually mess with that word. Um, but if you find that you are having trouble getting the um, audio to say your word correctly, then, um, you know, let's actually, we're going to try it. I don't know if I'm going to keep this. So let's do a test. Greg's. All right, let's see if that did anything here. Oh, or. Okay. That should have worked. Greg's. Greg's. Okay, I don't know if this works. Greg's. 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 Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, that worked well. Um, so, I don't know. I guess it's not going to work. Um, we're, gonna, we're just going to close that because that didn't do anything. But if you do have a word that um, it's not really sounding the way you want it to, do go ahead and right click and just check the pronunciation. Um, so the other thing you can do too is you'll notice that I have some cross outs up here. Uh, I crossed out my table of contents because I mean the reader doesn't need to hear all that. I mean, they're going to hear it when they're actually in the content. Same thing with title um, up here. Uh, sorry, the same thing with the edition notes. Um, the edition notes are relative to my ebook. Uh, they're have, they have nothing to do with my audiobook, so I see no reason to include that in the audiobook production. Um, so that's why I went ahead and crossed it out. So in order to cross out, you're going to do the exclude selection up here and then it's the same thing if I go down to like my readers discussion group um, I've actually removed that from my ebooks um, that was something I was going to try um, just as an experiment to see you know as possible kind of as a joke because um, you know who does a readers group discussion for a short story it was just absurd but I thought yeah it's funny let's do it uh, but I'm not going to do that for the audiobook so that's going to get excluded and then the questions themselves will also get excluded um, and by the way, if you do want to do the reader question series, you can go to my website um, where I have them all on this, the product page for Shellout. Um, and then some of my other books too have them. Again, you know, it's, it's a joke. You don't have to do it. Some of the questions, if you read them, you do realize they're kind of stupid. Um, now, I may want to keep my other books open, although some of these um, I won't. Oh, I just noticed something. I didn't allow. You know what? I, I just saw my allowance up here. Um, we're going to try this again. Sorry about that. Let's go back to Greg's. This whole time, I, it was asking me to... Um, okay. 
allow Greg's. Okay. Now we're gonna see what happens. Greg's. <laughs> it didn't change a word. Okay. So there you go. That's. Uh, make sure you you um, give permissions to your microphone and your inputs up there. I, that's something I didn't totally notice at all. Okay. Well, anyway, going back to where we left off um, with other books. Uh, again, most of these are going through rewrites, uh, so I wouldn't probably. I don't know that I want to actually include this, but you might want to. Uh, I'm not going to, so I'm just gonna, because I'm gonna give a different uh, background altogether. What I plan to do is I'm gonna actually keep a, um, a version of my new ebook style, where I'm just gonna invite people to go to my website. So uh, ultimately, if I go into my um, about the author section, like I'm gonna keep this. And I'm just going to write, you can visit him and his other books uh, by visiting his website at jeremybercy.com. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. And I think for an audiobook, that's, that's fine. Uh, because again, I, I think by the time you get to the end, you're not going to have anybody clicking on anything. There's not going to be any uh, links to your reviews. Although I might uh, ask, you know, please be sure to leave a review. In fact, I might do that. Um, we're going to get rid of all of this. So thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this book, please remember to leave a review. Reviews um, are the life blood of our book's success. And without it, it may languish, die, and affect the author's future. And while that may exaggerate, oops, can't spell, exaggerate the reality slightly, it is only slightly. Please leave a review if you enjoyed this book, or even if you didn't but preferably if you did. Thank you. All right. And play it back. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this book, please remember to leave a review. Reviews are the lifeblood of a book's success, and without it, it may languish, die, and affect the author's future. And while that may exaggerate the reality slightly, it is only slightly. Please leave a review if you enjoyed this book, or even if you didn't, but preferably if you did. Thank you. And there you go. It's perfect. Actually, I like that. I'm going to save that from the other books. So let me go into... Um, well, I'll save it off one here. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to have a bit of a break while I find a good place to post this, and I'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and copied that. So all I'm going to keep doing is I'm going to go through the rest of these and uh, see what I don't want. Like my mailing list, again, if they go to my site, they'll find it. So we're just going to exclude that. And author's note, um, oops, come on, come on. This is uh, cool. All right, um, again, this is going to be something that they can read on my site. Ebook version, this isn't an ebook, so they don't need that. Revision, oops, revision history. This is something I just add for those who aren't sure if they have the most recent version. And so that's not going to matter. And I'm going to keep my about the author so they know. And then contact questions. Again, they can visit my site. And coming soon, this is, uh, I wrote this back in 2015, so no longer relevant. So that's it. So really all I'm going to do next is just make sure that the text all sounds uh, acceptable. Uh, one thing I have to watch out for is if I look at um, right here, this what does this mean? You're going to notice that there's a pause here. What does that 
that mean? Great guest. So, moves. so clearly, like, that's too far of a pause. Now, what's nice is some programs, they let you close the gap there. This one doesn't. So what I might do is I may just, um, instead of, I'm going to get rid of the question mark, I think, to see if that fixes it. Not that I love that idea, but. What does that mean? Great guest. See, the problem with that now is it doesn't recognize, <coughs> like, the inflection's not there. So, um, you may have to just live with it. I mean, honestly, um, the other thing you can do is you can do, Greg asked, what do you mean? Or what does that mean? So, not, again, it's not the same as what the ebook is, but in order for it to sound good, I may have to do that. This school doesn't guarantee accreditation, he said. Greg asked, what does that mean? It means you'll throw away all of it. Yeah, so it sounds better now. There's not a pause. So if you do get into a situation where the pause is just ridiculous and there's nothing that you can do to make it better, and right now I don't think there is anything you can do unless... Um, yeah, because if you do the buttons, that all you have is find and replace. There's no, uh, there's nothing in here that allows you to change the speed or the, how how close things are kept together. So um, you will have to just bear that in mind. The other thing is, whenever you have a scene break, um, like I have these, this specialty case here. Even if I do like a, a traditional, uh, the asterisk, or if I do like a hashtag which is if you have a manuscript. I mean, it's going to probably read all of these things, so if I do... Okay, he said. How about this one, then? The following fall, Greg enrolled in a little... Okay, actually, that's interesting. It didn't read any of that, so maybe it recognizes the break. So, um, you may not have to worry about that. I mean, I would still just, you know, listen for it just in case. Um, but really, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's not a lot of, of things you gotta do. I, I, I think this particular uh, synthesis, the, the voices that they're choosing here, I think they're really exceptionally good as far as getting the inflections right. Um, the program that I use um, called Blackify that I think I referenced in the last video, I know I have other videos um, about it. I don't think it... Um, it allows you to do uh, pauses and, and things like that, but the inflections, uh, you have to know how to do the inflections, and, and it's not entirely um, um, intuitive on how to do that. With this one, it sounds like it kind of already knows what the the um, inflections should be based off of the way it's described. Like, I really liked how it, it figured out the, um, the it is uh, voice when you have it following, or when you have it starting a new sentence. Um, I don't remember where it is now, um, but it just—it sounds like it, it really knows how to say it correctly. So one of the nice things about this particular group of voices is that I think it's the, their top tier voices. Uh, so the fact that we have access to that um, for free for now, at least, I think it's pretty nice. So really, um, I think the best thing to do here is just go through and play with the system to uh, see if this is something you want to work with. Um, you don't have a lot of options as far as um, how to train the voice to act. So again, if you are a nonfiction writer, I definitely think you should do this because I think this is a really a strong um, use of the technology. If you're writing fiction where you have multiple dialogue uh, from different perspective voices, uh, it's going to be a little trickier to work with because you cannot uh, swap in and out of voices. Like I would love to have one of the deeper voices play uh, Greg's dad. Uh, that would be really nice. And if I were using my program called Blackify to do this, uh, I would do that. I would, you know, each section of Blackify has got its own, um, actually, do I still have it pulled up? I think I do. Um, if you go over to, uh, this is my dashboard. This is for my, um, article I just did on the Blackify program. Um, if I go to, oh, did it, did I lose it? Or I guess it didn't save it anymore. Okay. doesn't matter. Um, if I go to um, these different voices here, you'll see this one's Christopher. I, I actually, I, w I wonder if um, Morgan is in here. If you go through the list, you see all these different voices that are available. 
And I'm not sure if Morgan's on here, but we can look. Yes, yeah, so Morgan's not actually on here. So he may be a newer voice. Um, or one maybe that this program doesn't have access to. Right now, you'll see that I have um, links to, I think, the Google Voices here. Oh, that, actually, that might be why. I think I have um, Amazon's Voices and not Google. Um, so maybe a completely different set of voices. But anyway, um, some of these I think are very good, and certainly the ones that are neural uh, I would want to use for my ebooks. But what's nice about this particular program is that I can uh, swap the different words. So, like, if I go back to um, what was the example that I used here? Uh, right here. Um, if I go to, let's say, Christopher will be, actually, I think Guy will be Greg. And then Christopher will be the dad. See, I can uh, convert this whole thing into a single file. And so right now, if I play Guy's voice. When will I have time to study? And then Christopher. That's one of the other millions of kids who have to work their way through college. I prefer that because I prefer the ability to have, again, the different sound. But I don't think Google is going to let me do that. So I have to make do. And so you'll have to make do also unless they uh, give us the ability to swap. Uh, from character to character and which I mean maybe they'll do that at some point Maybe they'll figure out that they can make this even better uh, By allowing us flexibility in that way, but right now it's not there. So you're gonna have to just accept what it is but um, For as far as like front and back matter just I mean keep what you need and get rid of anything you don't even with copyright um, I removed um, one of my body texts and so I, I limited it down to just these two but even the way I've uh, arranged here You'll notice that I gave my ebook copyright because that was the original, and then I did the audiobook copyright. Um, and I try to keep it just as straightforward and plain as I can uh, because I want to make sure that readers get to the story as quickly as possible, but I still want them to respect the uh, licensing because uh, I don't want them to you know, record and, and sample and then paste it for free elsewhere because um, that's sort of not their job. It's you know, my job to decide where this goes. So. Um, anyway, that's um, once you're done, of course, you'll save it and then you'll create the audiobook. I'm still working on this, so I'm not going to save it yet. But when you're all done, you'll go into pricing. Whoops, I guess I don't want to. I guess I should save my changes uh, before I do anything like that. Um, and then you know, once they save, it'll give me the, audio, the ability to create the audiobook. Uh, eventually, I'm going to go into pricing review. And just, you know, again, it's just like creating a regular ebook for Google. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, you get your own GG key for audiobooks, so um, you will have a different uh, identifier once you're done. But that's really the gist of creating an audiobook. It, again, it doesn't look like um, Google will allow me to upload my own audiobook at this point. So that's unfortunate. Maybe that'll change uh, as the program gets more into it. And of course, I will, um, if I find out differently, I'll, I'll produce the follow up video. But, um, but those, again, that's the audiobook section of Google, and I do think that um, the voices are good enough that, you know, if you have nonfiction, you can turn out a really quality piece. If you have fiction, you may have to play with some of the uh, sounds a bit, and you may have to uh, diverge a little from your original text uh, in order for it to sound appropriate for your reader, or your, I guess your listener in this case. Sorry about that. This comes up at the times I don't want it to. Um, but yeah, I just, I think that it's overall, it's, I mean, if it's free, you may as well give it a try. So, um, at some point, depending on how, um, popular this video is and depending on how, um, involved the discussion gets on this particular, uh, topic, I may do a follow-up video on the results of what happens after I've published a few of these. Um, so, although I won't promise when that'll happen, I do think it will happen. So do check, or uh, yeah, check back in um, fairly soon to see what that is. I do want to remind you guys that I don't sell very many books on Google Play. Um, if you just want an overview, I'm going to go ahead and um, we'll go back to my original dashboard. If I go into my analytics, um, I don't mind sharing this with you guys. Um, I've sold three units this month, and when I, by sell, I mean I've you know, three people found me the free books. 
Um, that's not impressive, and I don't know that audiobooks will be any better, um, especially since I'm probably going to put a price tag on the audio versions. Um, I, I, mean, I probably should put a price tag on them. Um, I may I may leave one of these for free just um, to see if people even care. So maybe Shellout will be free, and maybe the other one will be uh, paid, um, just for comparison. Uh, but yeah, I just want to be honest with you guys. I don't sell very much on Google at all. Um, and I know that the market share for Google Play is also pretty small compared to Amazon. And um, if I went into my dashboard, uh, actually, I can show you guys real quick. If I go over, over to my spread count dashboard, um, you'll see for the last month, hopefully, sorry, it's taking a minute to load. Yeah, for the last month, I've gotten 10 units across all the books. And, you know, I mean, there is a Google um, book sale. Um, I'm not sure which one. Let's get the click which one that was. Um, let's see. Last 30 days. Yeah, this is Scribe Count. If you're not familiar with it, this is a um, this is a freemium program where you can track your sales across Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, all the traditional indie stores, and, and of course Google Play's on here and Smashwords, um, Drop the Digital, all the all the core players are on here. Um, oh, here we go. It does take a little while for it to load, but now you can see it has a little come through. Um, I've sold 30% of my uh, free units uh, off of Google Books, and the others came off of Smashwords. And I don't have any free off of Amazon because Amazon doesn't give you free unless you price match, which I haven't done yet. Um, if I go into the marketplace summary, it'll give me different um, information. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can see basically it's pretty straightforward there. Um, supposed to give you a bar oh this is why I need to go over here sorry this is what I wanted to show you is the top three books by bar graph um, once it populates the whole thing you'll see where all my units were um, you can check it by book or by platform but this is the overview of, again of where everything came from and I think when you click on when you, when you hold, sorry when you hold open the platform here I'm pretty sure this is all probably from Smashwords, which means the Google Play is going to be um, over here. Um, so you'll see the pattern is that they typically all get them from the same day. And if I do, let's see, can I do by chart? Yeah, if I go to uh, platform, you'll see a different metric here. Where is it marketplace that I want? Might be marketplace that I want, sorry. Well, I thought this was going to give me a bar chart for where it actually comes from. But you probably just have to rely on this down here. The, um, the uh, circle graph that you saw, but anyway. Um, point being is that I don't sell a lot to start with, so I don't expect the audiobooks to do much difference. Uh, regarding whether or not um, you can track the audiobooks through a uh, source like this, you can do your paperbacks and all of that. So if I go into, let's see, is this where I do my bookshelf here? If you look into your formats, um, right now you just have ebook card cover and paperback, so you won't actually be able to track your audiobooks anyway. So um, just consider that. Um, I think at some point they're going to add audiobooks. Um, but I know this isn't really about Scribe Count, this is about um, the audiobook Google Play, but I wanted to show you guys just for reference. Uh, do be aware that you saw that I had more sales in Smashwords than I did on, on Google Play. It's not going to be a particularly power, um, popular platform regardless of, of what type of book sales you're doing. So this is a good way to uh, make sure you're collecting all the money that's on the table. 
but don't expect there to be a lot of money on the table, I guess is my point. So whether this is uh, worth your time and investment really just depends on how well you're already doing on Google Play. Uh, but again, I'll do a follow-up video if there's anything that shows a difference in that. Um, but for now, um, if I do my all-time, um, I guess my three past three years, you'll see I did 52 units across three years. So, I mean, again, that's not a lot. So, um, you know, do what you want. It, it Maybe it'll work out for you. Um, bear in mind that uh, I do have books that do cost money, so the fact that I've earned zero on this platform also is telling. Um, Amazon is not the same. I do have sales on Amazon. Um, anyway, I'm kind of rambling now at this point. I just, but again, I want to give you guys the full picture of what to expect here so there are no surprises. Um, but that's Google Play Books and, and their audiobook item. Um, hopefully you guys know whether or not this is going to be right for you and whether or not you want to go through the process of making one and also whether or not you have a good strategy of developing it. So uh, pretty easy overall. Again, don't forget to check out my last video on the news announcement because um, I'll show you how, what it looks like to actually get started on creating the audiobook. And then you can see the differences between what the import was and versus what I did differently. Um, so that hopefully that'll give you some ideas. Uh, but yeah, that it's that's the whole show. So um, if you have any comments about audiobooks in general, please leave them. I'd like to hear your feedback. Um, have you had success with audiobooks? Uh, do you prefer the auto-generated audiobooks, or do you prefer um, having voice actors or doing it yourself? What kind of books do you write, and uh, what are your experiences doing audio through the type of book you're writing? Um, if you've done an auto-narrated book and you've done fiction, um, how did that work out for you? Um, and the same thing with nonfiction. So yeah, just create a conversation down in the comments and um, you know, let's learn from each other. It'd be really nice. So anyway, um, but that's all for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the things that YouTubers tell you to do. Um, just be responsible with whatever that is. You know, don't click on your responsible links. And um, again, don't forget to um, to subscribe to the channel. Um, I just said that, but you know, we'll say it again because uh, that's how. Uh, YouTube figures out that this channel is something that people like you want to watch. And um, so, anyway, that's all. We'll keep rambling if I keep going, so we're not going to do that. So have a good day, and uh, we'll see you for the next video. Take care. Bye.